booktube Lynette here and in this video I am going to be talking to you all about the books that I read uh, started and finished during the month of February I have to excuse me if I'm looking down a little bit but I have um, a series of stats that I want to talk to you about um, before I actually get into the books themselves so during the month of February I actually started nine books of those nine books, I have finished five, DNF'd one, and I still have three in progress. I have given an average rating of 4.2 stars this month. I had four four-star books and one five-star book. The books that I uh, the book that I actually DNF'd this month was a sci-fi short story book. Uh, and it was called The Silver Wind by Nina Allen. This is uh, following a watchmaker. Um, and it, I think there's something about time travel in there. Uh, I didn't really get very far. I only got a few pages into it. And I wasn't really gelling with the writing. And then I realised it was a series of short stories. And I just decided that actually the book wasn't for me. And I took it back to the library which is why I don't have a physical copy here for you um so unfortunately that was the first book that well the only book that I actually DNF'd in February but it's the first book that I've DNF'd in 2020 so far the two books that I have in progress are ones I'm going to carry into my March TBR the first of those two books that I want to finish is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. I am about, yeah, I'm just about 400 pages into this. Um, at the time I'm filming this, I haven't really read very much more. It's right at the beginning of March, but it is the first book I want to finish, th finish this month. This is, um, as we all know, a story about Harry Potter, who is a very famous wizard in his world. Uh, it's year six of Hogwarts. Um, so he's in his first year of his newts and he is um, also discovering hormones and girls, really discovering girls and hormones this year. Also, he's not quite so likeable this year either. He's turned into a little bit of a bully, um, but he's also dealing with Hermione and Ron and the realisation that they have hormones too. Um Again, they've fallen out just when he needs him needs them the most to be on his together and with him. So, yeah, we're getting to the part where it's really starting to get serious now, and he's having to um, find out some information for uh, Dumbledore. Obviously, I've read this book a few times, so I already know what happens. I already know how it ends. I'm not prepared for it. I never am. Uh, but we shall see how I get on. But yes, this is the first book that I actually want to finish in March. Um, so thoroughly enjoying it. As usual, can't put it down once I've started it. So yes, we'll be seeing how I get on with that one. The other book um, that I've started, physical book that I've started, that I haven't made very much progress on, I've actually only read about 50 pages, is The Great Hunt by Robert Jordan. This is the second book in his Wheel of Time series, following Rand and Matt and Perrin and Egwene, Nineveh, um, who have left Emmonsfield because um, they're being hunted by some pretty nasty creatures uh, who think that one of them is the Dragon Reborn and uh, that he, the breaking of the world is going to come about and they want to capture him and use him for their own ends. Uh, this starts out with them all being in a city in the very west of the country uh, where the um, ladies of the White Tower arrive and Rand wants to escape and in the, that this that's as far as I've got. I read this about 15 to 20 years ago. Don't really remember much about it. Um, but I want to try and read another 50 to 100 pages in March. Um, again, I enjoyed what I read um, and we'll just see how we go. But yes, that's that's the second of the three that I've got ongoing. 
So the third book that I've started um, is one that I don't particularly aim to finish when I start it, but I've decided that I want to try and read a few classics this year. And the first classic that I've picked out is David Copperfield. Um, David Copperfield is about a boy called David Copperfield, hence the title. And it follow his, follows his life from birth to uh, being a young man, starting his own family and all the trials and tribulations that comes with that. Uh, again, I didn't get very far into it. I think I only got about 10 pages in. Um, it's a book that I've read many, many years ago. I don't really remember it, but it's the first of the classics I want to read this year. Um, so I've made a start on it. If I don't finish it in March, I don't finish it but I would just like to make a little bit more progress. Um, and I didn't really read very much, like I say, in February, so I can't really say very much about the story. So on to the books I actually managed to finish this month. And the first book that I read was Glory and Death by J.D. Robb. This is book two of J.D. Robb's In Death series, and I read it for the In Death read-along that's happening on Instagram. Uh, they have an Instagram page called in death read along and yeah the aim is just to read um one of the in death books a month for the whole of this year if you read more you read more but the aim is to read at least one a month i'm just going with one a month there's 50 books in the series and i think if i tried to just read them continuously i would get bogged down and i'd end up in a slump and i would stop reading the series so i feel like one a month is quite a nice way to do it really because eventually i'll catch up with the series i might be intrigued enough to binge read a couple of books a month and i'll let myself do that but at the moment i'm just running with one a month glory and death is um again is based around eve dallas who is a homicide detective in a futuristic new york and she is involved with a mysterious man called rourke and it's um, romance as well as an actual crime fiction novel in this one, the crime is that two very successful women uh, in the public eye have been murdered and Eve has to not only find the link between them because apparently at first glance there's no connection but Eve is convinced that there is a connection and they have been murdered by the same person. She also has to hunt down and arrest the actual murderer before someone else is killed. This murder um, investigation does take a toll on Eve, uh, professionally and personally. There are links, again, to the homicide division that she works for. And also her partner, Rourke, is implicated. And this creates quite a bit of friction for them in this uh, homicide. She also has to come to some realisations. It, it, um, forces Rourke to force Eve to face up to her feelings um, and the fact that she's pretty closed off to people emotionally and that she has to let him in um, or they have to walk away from each other. It's uh, very well written. The story, again, part way through, I guessed who the murderer was. I did figure it out quite quickly. Um, but the interaction between Rourke and Eve kept me reading as well. And I did keep reading because it is very well written. So I wanted to find out, was I right? Um, had I picked the correct murderer? Um, I, I gave this four stars, thoroughly enjoyed it. And at the end of it, I was itching to move on to the third in the book. So um, I, I, I think four stars is uh, the right rating for this book. From there, I then went on to my... Uh, Romanceopoly books that I had to read in February. I'd set myself the task to read three books. The first book that I read was for The Vault um, and this was uh, to read an urban fantasy novel. I picked A Fairy of Bones and Gold by Hayley Turner. This is a male-male romance novel and it's about Patrick Mon uh, who is a mage with Supernatural Operations Agency. And he is sent to New York to investigate a missing immortal. Uh, these immortals are based on the Greek gods. And he has to find out what's happened and also follow up on some demonic killings that have also happened. I don't know whether there's a previous series written by Hayley Turner or not. Um, but this book keeps referring to a past battle that Patrick took part in. 
uh, where another immortal was actually killed and that is quite um quite jarring in a way i did i did find that take took me out of the story a little bit because i kept wondering what was this other battle about was there anything written about it but i did keep reading patrick travels to new york and while he's there he meets a werewolf alpha um shifter called jono and the fates decide that actually jono and patrick have to stay together it as the story goes on you find out that actually Jono is part of the battle that is to come and the reason he's with Patrick is to do with Patrick's magic and to do with Jono's status as an alpha um and it's also about their romance um the romance I felt was a little bit mm -hmm. I didn't really believe it uh I'm not used to male male romance anyway um so I'm used to closed off male characters, but when the both of them are a bit closed off, it just it just to me didn't feel right. And it took a while for me to warm up to them and their romance. Um, but I did in the end and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was really glad that they ended up together. It's not a happy ever after. It's more of a happy for now. This is the first book in a series, so it does carry on. And I understand that... Um, they will pick up again in an, in the next book again i did give it four stars i think maybe it's more of a three and a half than a four uh i have put the second book in the series on my wish list um because i think i probably would like to continue because i'm intrigued by the whole greek gods and the battle that happened um because that story hasn't ended either uh, so i'm intrigued by that part of it rather than the romance um but it was good. It ticked off um, the vault for me on Romanceopoly. Um, so that was a good finish for the month. The third book that I finished, again, was another one for Romanceopoly. And this one was for The City. And it was, no, for City Lane. And it was to read an enemies to lovers romance. Um, I actually picked a new release and it was Then You Happened by Kay Bromberg. Uh, Kay Bromberg is one of my all-time favourite romance authors. She is very, very good at writing romance books. She, uh, she knows how to write human emotion um, and she knows how to uh, build that into her story in a natural way so that you're swept along with it and you feel everything your characters are feeling so you you feel upset you feel happy you laugh you cry you you're angry um but also she writes so well that you can relate it to your own life um i actually got to chapter four in this book and there were a, there were a couple of conversations that happened in chapter four which relate quite heavily to my own life and and they actually made me sit back and, and realise that some of these things that were being said to the main character in chapter four have been said to me in the last few months and it actually brought home to me how true those those things are and I just I can't fault Kay Bromberg's writing um she really does write so well and if you like romance if you like a little bit of smut with your romance as well um then definitely definitely highly recommend so then you happen so i better tell you what it's actually about then you happened is about tatum knox who is trying to run um her failing horse ranch that she has inherited from her husband who passed away a year before the setting of this book unfortunately when he passed away she found out that actually he wasn't the man she thought he was and he had massive gambling debts, had put the horse ranch into huge, huge financial debts to fund his gambling habit. And she's been trying, she spent the previous year trying to dig her way out of those debts. She's managed to do that. And now she's trying to build up the actual breeding side of the ranch. And she's advertised for some help. And this is where Jack comes in. Jack replies to the advert and from the start there's a lot of friction between them they don't get on uh, Tatum makes it clear she doesn't want him there even though she needs the help because she's worried that he's been influenced by the local town and what they think um but 
Jack eventually makes her come round and see that actually, no, he is um, there for good, honest reasons. He doesn't want to know what the town think of her. In that way, he wants to form his own opinion. And from there, they start to build a friendship, start to build a little bit of trust, and then they start to build a relationship. Again, like I say, you, you laugh, you cry, you feel everything that her characters are feeling. Towards the end of it, there is a twist. I did kind of see the twist coming. Um, there were a couple of lines that were mentioned, which I went, hang on a minute. And I did get it. Um, it didn't pull me out of the story though. And I did have to keep reading because I wanted to know if I was right. Also, I wanted to met, I wanted them to get together and, and be together and be happy in the end. Um, so again, because of that, I only gave it a four stars. Um, it is a four stars. I do. I was really, really happy with it, and I was really glad that I picked it up, um, and that I didn't keep it on hold for too long because, like I say, I love Kay Bromberg's writing, and I can't, I can't fault it. Um, her style is just well. Go read her books, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So that was book three for the month. Book four that I finished was again for the Romanceopoly. And this was, I landed on the library square um, and this was to read a book of your choice. Just any book, no, no theme, no trope, nothing. Um, so I picked Royally Yours by Emma Chase. This has been sat on my Kindle for about two years. It's the fourth book in Emma Chase's Royally series. And in this book, we follow Queen Lenora and we go back to when she was a girl um, when she was still a princess and it uh, takes you through her ascending to the throne and the reasons why and then the conflict hits. Um, she is informed that to keep her throne and before she's uh, before the coronation she has to marry. She doesn't want to marry, um, she wants to rule in her own right, she doesn't want to be relying on a man to back her up and be the voice of the crown. She's the voice of the crown as far as she's concerned. Um, she makes an arrangement and some tragic circumstances mean that that arrangement can't be kept, but it is passed on to someone else. And this is where her future husband, Edward Rourke, comes in. Edward, The marriage between Lenora and Edward is an arrangement, um, but you actually get to see them building their relationship and friendship right up to the marriage and beyond and it's a sweet story um they're such a fiery feisty cu couple together um queen lenora is she's been brought up to be princess she's been brought up as the heir to the throne um so there's some aspects of life that she hasn't actually experienced edward uh, helps her experience those aspects and also introduces her to the world of love and sex and everything that comes with that it's again it's only it's not a very big it's not a very long novel um but it is full of impact and i did cry and you did believe in edward and lenora as a couple they were so great together and i really do recommend if you like uh, romance and you like royal romances um you need to go back to the first book um which is royally screwed which is uh, follows uh, one of queen lenora's grandsons um, but they're a great set of novels and um, I look forward to reading more from Emma Chase. She's She's got a couple of other series that she's written before the Royally series and I'd like to go back and actually pick up more of those books and, and read more from her because I do thoroughly enjoy her writing style. Again, I gave this one four stars, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, there are a couple of people in the Royally um scene that I would like to see other books from so I'm hoping that she does write more from this series in the future. The last book that I read in the month of February and I finished this just a few days ago and that is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. This was my five star read of the month. I absolutely loved this book. Uh, it was a slow burner for me um, the first 
50 to 100 pages i was reading it and thinking where where's where's this going um this is so slow but actually once i got past that and i'm glad i kept going because it's such a beautiful novel it's about uh, laszlo strange who is a librarian who since being a small child has been obsessed with this city um it's a city where uh, 200 years before people stopped visiting from that city and strange is obsessed he really wants to know why he wants to know what happened to them and then when he um when he's a young boy all of a sudden the name of the city disappears from the mind of everybody he knows and disappears from every shred of paper he can find written about it and all anybody can call it is the city of weep Laszlo becomes, he, he's enamoured by the city and he wants to know what it's all about. He wants to know what happened to it and he would love the opportunity to travel. Eventually, visitors from the city arrive at, uh, in the country where Strange lives and Strange has the, um, and Laszlo has the opportunity to go to the city and he takes it with both hands. And it's about... From then on, it's about he grow how he grows and changes as a character and the things he finds out about himself and the things that he realises about the world and also about what other people realise about him. And it's just... Oh, it's, it, it's just so good. Um, I was crying by the end of it. Um, it does end on a bit of a cliffhanger. It does end on a sad note. But I really want to go and I've already got Muse of Nightmares lined up. Um, this is a library copy, which is why it's a bit shiny because um, it's got a protective cover on it. Um, but this book is just so beautiful. Um, I just, oh, I loved it. I loved it. Five stars, a fantastic five stars. Um, if you like fantasy novels, it's young adult fantasy. But if you love fantasy novels um, with beautiful writing lyrical writing please check this book out i cannot talk it up enough absolutely absolutely adored it and i'm on i was on such a high to fin that this was the last book i finished in the month i was so glad that i took a chance and picked it up because originally i wasn't going to pick it up i saw it in the library and i thought you know what no i'm not going to bother with it um and then i went back and give it a go you will love it it's just a beautiful story and I don't think I can gush anymore um I, if I said any more I'd give it away uh but yes so that was the last book that I finished so that was all the books I've read in February um as you can tell I had a very good reading month I enjoyed everything I read apart from one um and I'm enjoying everything that I'm still ongoing reading uh, I hope you had a great reading month in February um and tell me about it all in the comments below and I will speak to you all again soon. Bye!